Hey everybody, Dave Mary Rackets here. This is take like 12 for this video, so I'm starting to get annoyed with myself. Uh, anyway, we're going to go over some things that happened over the course of the last week. Uh, we're just going to cram it all together. We're going to start with spiders that molted. Uh, and I don't know how well you can see in there because the way that the light is, but that little orange-ish blob is a Terranochelis lugardi. You can see the molt right there in the corner. So that one there molted. If you look here, you can see a spider that's going to mold anytime soon. That's Brachypelma um, elbow pelosum Nicaraguan. Um, nobody molted in here, but we have an Ornata. The Ornata is going to molt soon back there. And uh, no molt, no molt. Here in this enclosure is the, there's the Terranopelma sazame. That one molted over the last week. Um... I guess we'll go down here and you'll see Chindi, the GBB. All my spiders are all over the place right now because I'll, I'll explain what I tried to do here after I get done with all these molts. But that one, her, that's a her. And there's uh, Arkham, the boy. He molted this week uh, also. I believe Obi molted right at the beginning of March. My pal Obi. Um, who else molted? Who else molted? Who else molted? This one is another one that I can't remember if it was at the beginning of March or not. Um, I didn't feel like going over and watching my videos. Um, sometimes I watch them, sometimes I don't, believe it or not. I don't always watch my videos. <clears throat> so, you know, if I make mistakes on the videos, I don't even know it sometimes. So, anyway... There's Grandma's Tall Paul Cripes. That's Cujo. He's a boy, but I do believe that he, he molted before um, March started. But you know what? I'm the one behind the camera, so we're going to just film whatever I want to. Anyway, here's... Uh, this is Ash. Again, I believe Ash molted prior to March, but once again, my camera, my channel. No, oh, anyway... Yeah, I, I'll just throw, show her, throw her in there and show her because, um, look at her. I mean, yeah, why wouldn't you? Uh, one other one that molted that we still haven't seen yet is this one here. Brachypelma Uh He has come out a few times, but uh, not much. He, he comes out, walks around. Uh, the other day he came out, walked around, got a sip of water, and went right back down into his uh, burrow there. And then this one here, which again, you really can't see her. Oh, you can see her foot there. That's the NC Ocatella Olivacea, the golden black baboon. Um, she molted. Now, I'm pr pretty sure that one happened right at the beginning of March or, you know, the first or second or whatever. Uh, it's been at least a week. Uh, I fed her yesterday, actually, and she ate. <clears throat> so those are the ones that molted. And then we can go right into, um, you know, the ones that I changed. Yeah, we're talking, looking at nothing. You can at least look at Ash while I'm saying something here. Um, again, we're, we're, I'm holding the, the camera right now. So my apologies. Uh, because it's easier now, instead of taking me an hour to take each enclosure down, uh, I'm just going to hold it and go from enclosure to enclosure and talk about the week. And uh, so... Ones that got new homes will be coming up next. What, what I tried to do with this video was try to be a little bit on the humorous side. So what I was going to do is film the whole entire thing in uh, time lapse. And of course, you know what happens when someone talks and they're filming in time lapse. It makes them sound like a cartoon character. So I thought that you guys would get a kick out of that. But then I realized if I did that for 5-10 minutes, you, would, you really wouldn't really know what's going on. So I decided not to do that because it just... It just didn't work right for me. And we'll do that with something else. Um, but we'll figure out a different video. And then I'm going to add a clip here in this video somewhere um, of me going to pick up my son the other day in the snowstorm that we were having. And I'm really getting fed up with snow. But uh, you'll hear, uh, just to give you a little taste of where I'm from. And, and, you know, here we are, what, today's March 10th. Uh, I believe today's March 10th, right? March 9th, March 10th, one or the other. Might even be March 11th. I don't know. Um, no, today would be a 10th because next Saturday is the 17th, which is Tinley. Yeah, so today's March 10th. No, today's March 11th. Yesterday was March 10th. Holy crap, I can't even tell you what day it is. 
that's what happens when you're off work with an injury. You, you kind of lose track of, of time. Uh, the days don't really mean anything unless you have an appointment to go to. Anyway, so it didn't work out um, doing the time lapse thing. So we'll, we'll do that again another time. But uh, so it's some of the spiders that actually moved homes um, over the course of the last week or so, again, uh, Cujo's got a new home. Again, that might have been right at the beginning or the end of March, along with this guy here, which is the which is the Neoholotheli insay. Um, uh, people like to see the the stuff, or the enclosures that I do because it gives them ideas, and I don't try to make them completely natural, but I but I do like to have it somewhat natural. You know, now, they don't need it. Honest to God, they really don't need it. You could just put a box of dirt in here and a little hide. And, and they're going to do their thing. And then, then the enclosure becomes their burrow. You don't really have to worry about it. So I just do this because I like looking at it. It makes it more attracting, attractive. And uh, it's much better for pictures, too, when you're taking pictures. But anyway, Neoholotheli Inse. This little dude here is snow. This is the Gramstola pulchra. Uh, that's the water dish. That's the water dish. And many of you can attest to... The, the mound of dirt that he buried that thing in, or she buried that thing in. Uh, you're getting a glare. It's sun, sun's coming in through the window, and it's reflecting off of everything. Probably not the best time of the day to be doing this, but uh, I'm home. The kids and the wife are gone for the morning at uh, religious edu education class, so I'm taking the opportunity to do this now. So there's, there's Snow. Uh, he got, or she got moved the same time the Inse and the Polkripes and... This one here, which is the, this is the Saracopelma rubronitans, right? Yeah. Saracopelma rubronitans, which is now hiding all the time down inside the burrow. Um, I don't get to see them very often anymore. It kind of bums me up because it's a really cool looking spider. This, this is one of my favorite uh, things that spiders have done. Or any of the ones that have been rehoused recently. This is the Ephobopus rufusins. Uh, this guy here is done some work as you could see i just kind of put these sticks down you know laid them at a certain way and you know someone mentioned i think it was uh steve mentioned it looked like kind of roots coming out of the out of a bank or something and um it, these spiders are found both in, in swampy areas and in dry embankments along the side of the road so it's really hard to tell now cat if you remember cat if you guys watch cat's videos go check her out if you haven't but she got an ephobopus roots or ephobopus murinus the other day um, an adult, most likely female by the size, and most likely wild caught. And it's, sometimes it's hard with those spiders to figure out how to house them correctly because you don't know exactly where they came from. And, you know, the locality of where they are really makes a big difference because they're adapted to living a certain way. And if you can't reproduce that, sometimes they struggle to live. So I'm helping her out trying to get, you know, the balance of what she needs for that one to make it thrive. So we're kind of going with a half damp and half dry. And I think she'll explain that later on when she does an update on, on that. But uh, <clears throat> that's the only drawbacks about buy, buying wild-caught specimens, other than taking them out of the, the wild, of course. But you're not the one doing it. Um, is that you don't know exactly the atmosphere that they, they're coming from. You know, t are a big one that come in wild-caught all the time. And a lot of people struggle with them because they... They, they listen to what everybody says. Oh, they got to have all this high humidity. It's got to be damp. It's got to be wet. And then they come to find out that that spider might have possibly come from someplace that was actually dry. And it was adapted to living in a drier atmosphere. Um, same thing with Emurinus, a lot of the, the Gramstola, uh, the, the Porteries. And this, this is why, and I'll, and I'll talk about this here towards the end, um, why I believe that uh, Gramostola rosé and Gramostola portery are, are excellent beginner species, and I'm going to tell you exactly why. Look forward to that towards the end of the video. Um, and you'll be surprised by the answer, and I, I think it'll make sense to a lot of people once you hear it. And because they get a bad rap, and a lot of people are so, you know, so on them about their, their behavior. But let me finish this part, and then we'll, we'll talk about that for a second. So, the E. rufusins, or yeah, I always want to say the rufusins, because that's my favorite spider right now. Uh, it's funny because, you know, we go over the, the tarantula tag and everybody's like, oh, what's your favorite spider? And you know, you're like, oh, it's this one, it's this one, it's this one. And, and then you get another one and you're like, oh, my gosh. You know, and that one was really, really, I love that spider to death. I, I can't wait to set something up cool for that one when it gets another molt in. But uh, 
in here is the Brachypelma emilia. And you notice that um, it's getting a little condensation down here in this bottom. And it's ironic because that's where she actually stays all the time. Um, for a Brachypelma species, people are always like, oh, you got to keep them dry, you got to keep them dry, you got to keep them dry. But you know what? A lot of times when you dig down into the dirt where they're at, it can be a tad bit damp and moist. So she's made that call. If she didn't like that area, she, she wouldn't be in it. So when she doesn't want to be in that, um, you can see her right there, the peat. When she doesn't want to be towards that moisture, she comes down here and sits. So she's kind of regulated uh, her own little area. And you can see right here, she's got a, a vent hole. And she did this herself. Um, when she dug this up, she came up through here, pulled this dirt down. I watched her do it. And then brought it out, came around and stuck it up on top up here where she did everything else. So she's created her own area where she likes it. And, and, and I'm bummed because I love seeing the Amelias. This one is under the ground. The other one isn't. Um, I wish she would stay up above ground, but she's happy where she's at. So, you know, that's perfectly cool by me. Uh, he didn't move. Why am I grabbing you? Here's another one. This is the whole Othelli. <clears throat> Long peas, um, probably hiding underneath there. I don't know. We can get a. Probably can't get a. Yeah, he's under there. This this spider is absolutely insane, running around all the time now. Much happier since I moved it into this enclosure than than the critter keeper. And the critter keeper it's just stuck in that. Um, skull, a skull, yeah, skull, skull, the steer skull that was in there it stayed in there 90 percent of the time and didn't really do much of anything and then the last the last major rehouse oh no, we did her i got, gotta remember her she should be molting sometime in the near future this is the uh, nandu carapoensis uh, my favorite nandu species um it looks eventually that she's a girl so you know fingers crossed and i ho hope everything uh, I hope, hope we have a female with her. Um, and the eventual shots I took and sent to people, also, they, uh, most of them believe that, that we're a female too. And then this girl here, which is the, you can see her right there, the uh, Neo Hotelian say, I don't want to bother her. <clears throat> um, she's in, in, the, in the area that she needs to get wet down because I think she's going to molt. So um, I've noticed with the insays that when, when they start being inactive and they stop eating and they look like they're getting a little bit enlarged, if you dampen their enclosures down, um, almost like simulating, you know, uh, maybe a four or five or six day rain period. Um, if they're in pre-mold, it'll push them to molt a little bit quicker. Uh, that's the only species I've ever noticed doing that. And that could also be uh, a coincidental um, because I, I've only done it to two. And, and uh, well, actually, I've done it with her twice. She's the only one that I've had it done with. Uh, the other ones I've never really done. Um, I just spray or overfill their water dish once a week when I, when I do uh, watering and feeding with them but uh let's go to uh two other things um if you guys remember we'll bring we'll bring them down the two gimpy avix that i got um here's the little one and you could see hopefully you can see hold on let's bring them over here maybe you'll be able to see a little bit better Maybe not, huh? Why don't we want to focus? You can see how plump he is now. I gave him two little tiny crickets yesterday. I mean, these things were like microscopic cr crickets. I didn't eat them right away, but he has, or she has, eat them. This is uh, Sibin, Sabin, Sibin? Yeah, Sibin. That's how you say it, Sibin. That's what they told me, Sibin. So it's almost like you're saying seven, but you're saying Si instead of E, uh, and the B instead of a V. This is the one with the seven legs, and... Um, it's eaten twice now, so, uh, it's doing okay. It's actually webbing, as you can see. Um, it just, this was, this all happened since yesterday because it didn't, it didn't have any webbing at all yesterday. And you can see how shiny it is right now. So hopefully this one will molt soon, uh, to get its missing limb back. And here is everybody's new favorite, um, Cinco. Now, up to yesterday, I had left it in the little blue deli cup that it came in. And 
I open it up every day, just check on it, and um, it's generally in the same spot, hollowed up in the corner. Yesterday, it was moving around quite a bit. So um, when I opened it up, he crawled right out onto my hand, and I was like, okay, if he can crawl out of that thing onto my hand, he could probably hang on to something. So what I did is I put him in a baseball cube, which is very low, so he doesn't have, you know, I, I don't want him to fall, and if he does, it's just that little tiny area right to there, right to there. Um, and I put that little piece of wood in there, and that is, he went right to that piece of wood, or she went right to that piece of wood and is hanging out. So I know that they actually probably could still climb. I just, for, you know, my intents and purposes, I want to get this guy through a molt first before I give him something bigger. And um, what he'll go in will be the same thing as what the HMAC is in right now. Uh, we'll put him in that. And we have, I have a spare one that had the Armenia in it before I sold the Armenia. So that's pretty much it for the week. Um, now, let me, uh, let me clean up everybody, put everybody away, and then, then I'll do uh, a real quick, uh, I'll go in front of the camera real quick, and we'll talk about just a couple of small things. Um, and, and please, you know, if you've made it this far, hang out for that last part, because um, there's a couple things that I, I do want to make sure that I mention. So please, please, please stay for the end, and uh, we'll talk to everybody in about five minutes. Guys, stay from your rackets. Um, we're going to end this video here. Um, we're going to try and do this under 10 minutes. Um, and what I wanted to really discuss, and, and I, when I started talking about the Gramstol Rosea stuff earlier, I'm, I'm going to hold that off and do that in a separate video. Um, I do want to write some stuff down to give you some information about where they're from. So we'll do kind of like a a tarantula spotlight where I'll 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 talk about them in front of the camera, and then we'll we'll show the few the three that I have the the Gramstol species north, the Rosea and the Porteria that you guys saw earlier anyway digging and, and I'll explain to you um, kind of the the harsh atmospheres that they come from and or the the environment I should, really shouldn't say atmosphere the harsh environment that they come from and um, why they get such a bad rap in the hobby as far as beginner species are concerned because I really do believe that they're a pretty decent beginner species if you understand what you're getting into and that's I think the problem uh, that people don't understand what they're getting into when they buy tarantulas. Uh, there was a, a comment the other day on one of the Facebook groups. I, I can't remember which one. It's one of the ones that I'm an admin or moderator on. But uh, the girl said, oh, you know, I got I got a spider. Uh, I've had it since February 27th. My first spider uh, the, on the 28th, it, it, it went into its burrow and I haven't seen it since. And it's, it's very disheartening because I don't know if it's okay. And I you know I want to see it. And... Um, that's a big common mistake from people that start out in the hobby is uh, a lot of times they think that they're buying a spider, they put it in a box or they put it in a nice glass aquarium, but they're oversold, you know, and you go to Petco, oh, you buy this Gramstola Rosea, oh, you need this big Exoterra, oh, and you need this, oh, and you need that. You know, before you know it, it's now cost you about 185 or $200 to walk out of the store with a spider that you could probably buy for $12 at an expo, put into a 7 or $8, um, probably not even that, probably a $4 tote and it'll live perfectly fine. You, you probably get a Gramstola Rosea and a setup for it for under $40 if you do it economically. And I'll, I'll do a video on that too, on, you know, the economics of, of tarantulas, um, you know, with the Exoterras and the Zoomed enclosures and stuff like that. And then, you know, using stuff like I do here from Hobby Lobby and, you know, just regular Sterilite containers that you can get at you know, like the ones up top, if you can see them up there, the plastic ones up top that you can get at Home Depot or at Lowe's or at Walmart or Target. You know, I think the ones up on top are about $1.99 or $2.99 at the most. So, and, you know, the economics of you know, starting a collection, and that's the big thing. Um, that's a big mistake that people make is, is they realize, yeah, I can go buy these plastic things and get them cheap and I can buy more spiders. And before you know it, you have 50 of them. And now you want to see them a little bit more. And it's exactly one of the mistakes that I made. Um, and then you start getting all these things, you know, and before you know it, you're, you're in this situation where I'm at here with all these spiders that uh, there's no way in another year that they're, I'm going to be able to have all these spiders. There's just no way. Uh, I'm not going to have the room for them. So, you know, making those, those mistakes that I made, hopefully I can stop people from making those mistakes. But I also want to talk real quick about uh, the YouTube um, tarantula 
community. Uh, it is a Facebook group, and it's it's strictly done for people that do YouTube channels that have tarantulas in them. Um, uh, we, we also allow people that have reptiles, but they also have to do videos with tarantulas in them. And, you know, I prefer, just this is me personally, I prefer that the majority of your videos be uh, tarantulas because it is the tarantula community. Um, but I understand that some people only have a handful and they only do a video every now and then because people have reptiles and then, you know, four or five spiders. Uh, I'll use Trey and April. They do their the tarantula videos every now and then um, because the bulk of their stuff is reptiles. So... They do their tarantula stuff, and it's, I just love those two guys. Uh, the, uh, just my favorite people in the world. Um, anyway, there, there's other reptile people that only have three or four of them, so you can't do videos on tarantulas that often when you only have a handful of them because they don't eat like every day. You know, they're not little fuzzy puppies where you got to feed every day or, or little tiny kittens that you got to feed every day or even hamsters, gerbils, rats. Uh, my turtle could eat every day. Um, I don't feed her every day because if I did, she, she would grow way too fast. But, um, you know, the geckos, uh, they could eat every day. You know, some spiders will eat every day, but they shouldn't. So um, what I want to discuss is, is this, the whole, uh, and I know this has been overdone. I'm sure you guys have watched videos on this somewhere. The whole monetization stuff from YouTube and how they changed the way it works. And, you know, it was all because of one person that did some stupid stuff thought that he was untouchable and found out he wasn't um but the the rules have changed I, I was like this close to being able to do it if i wanted to and then the rules got changed and now i'm like this far from being able to do it and um i didn't want to do it before i didn't want to 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 make it feel like you know i'm doing this video so people can pay me um because i don't do it it's not why i'm doing it i'm doing it because i love to do it and i do it because it gets me involved and it gets me be, to be able to talk to people. I've made so many great friends. Um, I mean, countless friends on, on the Facebook group. But, you know, Kat, I am use Kat because we talk almost every day. Uh, questions that she has or just, you know, commenting on certain things. Just, you know, I rib her a lot and uh, I just enjoy being friends with her. And, you know, we, we formed a very, very tight friendship and bond and um you know I, dave scott's another one um you know I, I i know i can pick up my phone at any time and text him or message him or even if i had his phone number i could call him and talk to him about anything uh trey beck is another one uh, we've talked many times uh, the, the friendships that i've made makes me want to do this more and a lot of people are commenting and, and enjoying my work and enjoying the stuff that I'm doing and, and that's greatly appreciated. But I've come to the point where I realized that I could do, I think I could do a lot better than what I do. Um, the only problem is, is that I have a, a kid in college and twins that are getting ready to get their driver's license and you can imagine how much that car insurance is going to go up. So my disposable funds to, to get stuff like, you know, a new DSLR camera or a video camera, stuff like that, it is just, there's just no way it's going to happen. So the only way for me to do stuff like that would be to do these videos now, thinking about the monetization with YouTube. And there's another way I think that that can be done. I don't know that I really want to do a Patreon page. because it's almost, I don't know. I, I mean, I've talked about it. People said just to go ahead and do it. And I'd have to look into it. I'd have to talk to Petco and maybe talk to Dan and see how that, how about that all works. And I just, I don't know. We'll see. Um, we'll see. But, but I, I, I would like to be able to do more high quality videos, you know, get, get the software from my computer that I can edit them better, filter out some of the stuff that doesn't need to be in the videos, you know, learn how to do clips that, you know, one clip's got music and the next clip doesn't. And I, I, I can't do that on Viva Video and I haven't found a way to do it with uh, the Windows Movie Maker thing yet. Um, I just haven't really worked with that much. I do have some videos on the computer that I just, I'm trying to mess around with on that. And I screwed one video completely up. I, I like deleted half the in, inside part of it and I was going to upload it. And when I realized it, I, I couldn't use it. But so to, to stop rambling and, and come back to the, the road that I'm on is the, is the, most of the people that are subscribed to my channel are probably subscribed to most of the channels that, that I watch and that I support. And, you know, people that are friends of mine. Um, but if you're not, or if you're 
uh, someone just watches the videos but never hits that subscribe button um, you don't have to like the videos that, that that's that's not that big of a deal to me you know I, I the likes don't I don't I don't understand the whole like system on the videos anyway um, I don't know what they do for you or what they don't do for you but I know that to do monetization you have to have 240,000 minutes of watch time I believe um, I think that's what it is 240,000 minutes of watch time which I believe is I can't remember how many hours now. I mean, I should be able to do that in my head, but I'm not going to. Um, I think that number is solid, 240,000 minutes. So what would that be? 400 hours watched or something like that? Or 4,000 hours watched. 4,000 hours watched, I think. So that, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of time, 240,000 minutes. I'm only at like 65,000 minutes. And, the, and the, the way that that number goes up is the, is the subscribers go up because the more subscribers you have, the more minutes that you watch, then you can you can turn that monetization on. And that money that I would make doing YouTube videos or, you know, if I did do a Patreon page or anything like that, uh, would all go towards the hobby. And most likely it would go towards things like that, like software, um, camera. Uh, I really want a handheld video camera is what I really want. Lighting, you know, stuff like that. Um, and then hopefully eventually when, when we move from where we're at, you know, shelving and new, uh, new things for the collection and stuff like that. But so again, I, I sound like I'm begging and that's not what I'm doing. What I want you to do is if you're not subscribed to people that are getting close to that thousand mark, like I think Boxing Boa is real close. I didn't look, I don't look at people's subscription numbers. I, I kind of wait for them to, to make an announcement on the club. Oh, I hit, you know, 500 subscribers or I hit a thousand subscribers or whatever. Mike Farlos, Casey Tranchels, I know he's pushing that number. He's getting close to that. Um, he does some good work. We did a little small collaboration. He'll have out in a few weeks. Um, I just did a t tiny little part. He, he did the, the heavy lifting. Um, uh, Petco's going to be doing a video that uh, is a compilation. Uh, yeah. Compilation? Is that the word? Is that right? Anyway, it's going to be a collection of a bunch of videos from us YouTube um, um, Tranchel people. We all sent him a clip, and he's going to put it all together into one video. And I want I want you guys just to go hit those subscribe buttons for some people. You know, try to get them to that thousand mark. Um, because again, once that once the subscribers go up, the minutes go up with it. it it's it's a direct proportion. Uh, one goes up, the other's got to go up too. So uh, yeah, go go do that for them, and you know, go go see Cat Tarantula. I know that most of you. Uh, are already probably watching your stuff from the tarantula tag and that's really helped a lot of us out um, you know and, and that that was a uh, the whole question part was all cat she she came up with the questions um, but it was a compilation of, of her and I and I can't remember there was I think I think uh, exotic slayer was involved in that also trying to get an idea that we can get everybody together and get everybody talking and I had used examples from like Tom Moran and, and Casey Tarantulas where they did the you should have this in your collection and you don't. I'm um, trying to convince the other person to buy a tarantula that they don't have in their collection. And then Tom Moran and Mark's tarantulas that did the, the tongue feeding challenge, um, getting people to do stuff together. And she came up with that tag system. And it's been it's been great for her. She has really, really grown because of it. And she's got some, some great ideas. She's a very creative person. So... Um, She's grown faster than most channels do in their first handful of months. Um, she'll be at a thousand. I, I bet you by the end of, of a couple months, she'll probably hit her thousand mark. She may even hit it before I do. Um, but go check her out. Go check out Casey Tarantulas, Boxing Boa, uh, Andrew's Tarantulas. Um, Mark's over a thousand for Mark's Tarantulas. We know Tarantula Dan is Exotic Slayers at like thirteen thousand. Dave Scott. I'm not sure where Dave Scott's at. Go, go check him out. And, and if you don't, if you're not subscribed to their channels, please subscribe to their channels and you can go on my channel and down below. I, I don't privatize my subscription so you can see anybody that I'm subscribed to. And if you have a channel and you subscribe to mine and I'm not subscribed to yours, just send me a message and say, Hey, you know, can you, can you hit, hit the subscribe button for me? I'll be more than happy to do it because I enjoy watching other people's work and you know, the variety of things that are out there and the differences between what people do. Some channels, I, I disagree with the way that they have things set up and the way that they, you know, um, they work with their animals. But again, they're not mine, so I really can't say much of anything. So 
Uh, that's really what I want to talk about. And, and, you know, I hope that you guys have enjoyed the March Madness week one. I've enjoyed doing it. Um, I do have some, some different ideas that I want to try. And I hope you guys bear with me on some of them. Um, I decided because this March Madness is a little bit different that I'm not going to do the beginner uh, stuff until April. Um, that way I can make a playlist for that specifically. And I don't want them to get stuck in the March Madness thing because I did figure out how to do playlists, by the way. I'm pretty proud of myself. Um, so you could go to my channel, go to the playlist, and, and you can find all the March Madness videos are all collected into that playlist. And I'm going to start going through my channel and then filtering things in, you know, like uh, quick hits videos. I'll put a put a playlist of all the quick hit videos, and uh, except for the ones that I'm doing in this month of March. Uh, so you'll be able, if you want to just see quick hits, instead of trying to go through all my videos and find them, I'm trying to create those playlists for you guys so that it's a lot easier for you to find stuff. And uh, hopefully that'll help help you guys find stuff you want to watch. Because I know it's disheartening when you're trying to filter through a you know, four or 500 videos trying to find something you really want to watch. But if there's something that I do that does interest you, then they'll all be compiled into one little playlist for you guys. So, uh, again here, uh, everything's going good and, um, hopefully we'll, we'll continue to grow and prosper and we'll see everybody, uh, in, uh, either 9.5 later today or 10 tomorrow. Have a good day.